In the Pokemon TCG, Stadium cards are a special type of trainer card that stays in play until another stadium is played and has effects that apply to both players. Today, we're going to look at some of the worst Stadium cards. While there have been many incredible Stadium cards throughout the years, there's plenty more that are genuinely terrible. And kicking off list at number 10, we have Cinnabar City Gym, one of the first Stadium cards to be released. It's a Stadium card with the effect to remove a Water-type weakness from any Blaine's Pokemon in play. For context, let's take a look at Blaine's Nine Tails, a Pokemon released in the same set. Pokemon cards with an in-game trainer's name was a set mechanic intended to make new decks with interesting synergies. Cinnabar City Gym's competitive viability struggled, as removing a Pokemon's weakness is not a good effect to build an entire deck around. Although cards with the ability to negate weaknesses have seen meta play, such as weakness policy, these kinds of effects being on Stadium cards make it significantly worse. Since most decks play at least a few Stadium cards, it's too easy for your opponent to remove a defensive Stadium from play. As such, it's incredibly difficult to get any value out of Stadiums that don't immediately provide some utility on your own turn. Another issue about this card's design is that not all of Blaine's Pokemon can actually benefit from its defensive effect. For example, Blaine's Kangaskhan doesn't even have a Water-type weakness. It's also not the only Blaine's Pokemon without a Water weakness. The poor design of only preventing weakness of one type meant that if you wanted to build around some of Blaine's Pokemon, the card that was meant to synergize well with them didn't actually do anything. Even if your Pokemon did have a water weakness, there was almost no guarantee you'd be able to play against a water type deck. If you played against Pokemon of any other type, your stadium that you intended to be a key point of the deck is now useless, unless you need to get rid of an opponent's stadium card. Even with all of these poor aspects, Cinnabar City Gym actually saw a small amount of competitive play due to the existence of two other cards, Blaine's Arcanite and Feraligator. During the Team Rocket to Neo Revelation format, Blaine's Arcanine was one of the best attackers you could play because of its Firestorm attack. This attack costs 4 energy and deals 120 damage at the cost of discarding 3 energies attached to itself. At the time, Firestorm dealt enough damage to one-hit KO all relevant Pokemon in the format. Cinnabar City Gen found a niche in Arcanine decks since one of the format's other most threatening attackers was Feraligator, a water type whose deck played little to no stadium cards. In the Feraligator matchup specifically, the ability to remove Arcanine's weakness to water would be crucial to avoid one-hit KOs from Feraligator's Riptide attack. Cinnabar City Gym may be bad in a poorly designed card, but it did have a legitimate niche, leaving it at only number 10 on this list. And at number 9, we have Lake Boundary, one of the strangest stadium cards. When in play, this stadium has the effect to apply weakness for each Pokemon in play as times 2. What makes Lake Boundary so weird is that for a vast majority of the Pokemon TCG's history, Weakness is applied as a 2x by default. The only time this wasn't true was during the Diamond and Pearl era of the TCG. At the time, Weakness for all Pokemon was additive instead. As an example, if you attacked Kaladol with a Grass-type attack, it would only deal 20 extra damage. Ironically, this stadium did see a respect amount to play during the 2008 Worlds format. That format was heavily dominated by decks built around Gardevoir from the Secret Wonders expansion. In the Mirror Match, Lake Boundary saw play as a way to enable your own Gardevoir to one-hit KO your opponent's Gardevoir. Without the 2x weakness, this wasn't possible as Psychic Lock would go from 60 to 90 damage instead of 60 to 120. Other decks that were capable of using multiple different types of attackers also enjoyed the damage boost. Decks like Evolutions using Leafeon level X and a bunch of other Pokemon that evolved from Eevee appreciated the extra damage. Unfortunately, as better stadium cards and more Pokemon that naturally had a 2x weakness were release, Lake Boundary fell out of the format. It also began to see direct competition for the ability to apply weakness as 2x with Lucario GL, whose Boundary or Pokebody had the exact same function. Lucario also had a few advantages over Lake Boundary, such as being searchable off of Bebe's search, or through Cyrus's conspiracy, adding SP Radar. Despite having seen competitive play in the most important and highest level Pokemon tournament, this effect is technically useless throughout a vast majority of the game's history, making it one of the worst stadium cards. And at number 8, we have Pokemon Park, a card with the simple effect of restoring one damage counter from your bench Pokemon whenever an energy is attached to it from the hand. There are multiple reasons as to why it never saw serious competitive play. The first reason this card never saw serious competitive play is that damage restoration only came into effect if you attach an energy to a Pokemon. In practice, this meant the player using Pokemon Park would have to use two cards from their hand as well as their once per turn energy attachment to heal. The heal also only came into effect if you attach energy to a bench Pokemon and not the active one, so you couldn't even attempt to heal an active Pokemon at risk of being KO'd the following turn unless you managed to retreat it. Another downside was that restoring one damage every turn for only one Pokemon simply isn't very good. While it's possible that one damage counter could be the difference between an important Pokemon being KO'd in three attacks instead of two, this practically never came up. For instance, let's look at a common matchup during the Neo Genesis throughout Skyforge format, 
the one Pokemon Park existed during. If you were playing Dark Houndoom, whose Darkness Fire attack dealt 30 damage, plus 20 if you discarded Darkness Energy from it, and plus 10 more damage from the Darkness Energy's damage boost in effect, you could threaten a 2-hit KO against Feraligator, since the Pokemon had 120 HP. While the difference between 120 damage and 110 damage would prevent a 2-hit KO, Feraligator decks often had better ways of healing. The tool card Goldberry was a common tech option but the card discarding itself from the attached Pokemon if it has 40 more damage on it between turns to restore 40 damage from the attached Pokemon. Not only does Goldberry help for Alligator avoid being KO'd into attacks, as well as being usable by any active Pokemon, it also plays around other common tool cards and Strength Charm. Strength Charm added 10 damage to the attacks of Pokemon it's attached to at the cost of discarding at the end of the turn. Had the Feraligator player retreated their damage Pokemon to the bench and used Pokemon Park to restore damage instead of Goldberry, this common damage boosting tool card would still let the Dark Houndoom player 2 hit KO Feraligator when combined with cards to bring bench Pokemon back into the active spot. Pretty much every deck that wanted their Pokemon to survive 2 hit KOs would use Goldberry over Pokemon Park for superior healing and flexibility. For having too many downsides and simply being outclassed by far better healing options, Pokemon Park deserves a spot on this list. And at number 7, we have Wella Volcano Park, a stadium card with the effect of removing a burned Pokemon's ability to cure itself of the status condition between turns. Usually, when a Pokemon is burned, the owner of the burned Pokemon would put 20 damage counters on between turns and then flip a coin. If the coin came up heads, the burn was cured. Otherwise, the active Pokemon would remain burned. Volcano Park guarantees that the burn would remain until your opponent either retreated their active Pokemon, evolved their active Pokemon, or found another stadium card to play and hoped they could cure the burn between the turns. This card faced two massive pitfalls for viability during its standard formats. Firstly, the effect of preventing your opponent from curing burns through a coin flip rarely ever mattered. On your opponent's turn, there were just too many ways for them to cure burn. Perhaps the biggest issue facing the longevity of burn was Guzma seen playing almost all serious competitive decks. Guzma has the effect of switching one of your opponent's bench Pokemon with their active, and then allowing you to switch your own Pokemon. With a built-in switching effect on one of the most common supporter cards of the format, not only was it very easy to cure a burned active Pokemon by moving it to the bench, but that player also got to use the same card to start attacking vulnerable bench Pokemon. Guzma's very existence made playing decks built around status conditions incredibly difficult, unless they could use the extra damage from status conditions to kill your opponent's active Pokemon in a single hit. In those kinds of decks, Wella Volcano Park had no use, since there would be no burned Pokemon to continuously apply a burn to. The second major issue surrounding Volcano Park was an overall lack of good Pokemon to use the burn status condition with. While you could use Pokemon like Delphox and Furnape to burn your opponent's Pokemon and then deal massively increasing damage with the burn respectively, this combo never saw serious play due to the inconsistencies of needing to play multiple stage 2 evolution lines, as well as neither Pokemon being particularly strong attackers. Decks built around the burn condition due to their cards being pretty weak, as well as having an extremely difficult time playing into one of the most common staples of the format. For all of this, Wella Volcano Park deserves a spot on this list. And at number 6, we have Sir Chester Bath. This stadium has a simple effect of reducing all damage dealt to basic Pokemon by 20 after applying weakness and resistance. The issue with this stadium card is that it simply just isn't good enough. When the card first released, the standard form of the time was heavily dominated by decks built around basic Pokemon, like Pikachu and Zekrom Tag Team GX and Zacian V. Even with many of the best decks using basic Pokemon, Sir Chester Bath never saw serious competitive play. Not only is it a defensive stadium card that's easy to play around simply by your opponent playing another stadium, even if the stadium remained in play, reducing attack damage by 20 never mattered because 20 damage isn't to the difference between a 2-hit KO or a 3-hit KO. For reference, over the course of two attacks, most Pokemon in the format would deal around 300 to 400 damage. When no Pokemon in the format had 300 HP, it's pretty easy to see why no deck needed it. The card also never prevented any 1-hit KOs either, so it never had a competitive niche. So Chester Bath was just not worth playing. Marking the halfway point at number 5, we have All Night Party, a stadium meant to counter the sleep status condition. When in play, a player whose turn it is can cure a sleeping Pokemon and heal 30 damage from it. When Pokemon is asleep, you flip a coin between turns. If heads, the condition is cured. Otherwise, the Pokemon remains asleep and can't attack or retreat. Sleep can be one of the most frustrating parts about playing the Pokemon TCG, since it stops your active Pokemon from being able to do anything. All Night Party was designed as a counter to sleep-based strategies by giving any deck a guaranteed way to cure the status condition while providing some extra healing. Much like many of the aforementioned cards on this list, there were multiple reasons why All Night Party saw no tournament play during its time in the standard format. Funnily enough, these are the same reasons that the aforementioned Well of Volcano Park never saw play. Firstly, there were better ways to beat status conditions that weren't limited to only sleep. 
Most decks at the time already played multiple cards that could switch out their active Pokemon, like Escape Rope and Guzma to help move attackers to and from the active spot, meaning it wasn't hard to get rid of the sleep status condition. Secondly, there weren't any good Pokemon looking to abuse how strong putting your opponent's Pokemon to sleep could be. This meant that the very specific niche All Night Party could feel was never needed. Even if there had been a good deck trying to put their opponent's Pokemon to sleep, players would just use more copies of Switch cards to get around it. For being too specific of a counter card that's outclassed by more generic options, it just wasn't worth seeing play. And at number 4 on this list, we have Twist Mountain, a stadium meant to support decks built around restored fossil Pokemon. While in play, the turn player could flip a coin. If the flip came up heads, they could put a restored Pokemon from their hand onto their bench. For context, a restored Pokemon was a special type of Pokemon that could only be put into play by the effect of a corresponding fossil item card. This mechanic was used for the fossil Pokemon during the Black and White and X and Y sets, such as Aerodactyl being put into play by the effect of Old Amber Aerodactyl. Each fossil item has the effect of looking at the bottom 7 cards of the player's deck and letting them put a corresponding restored Pokemon they found there directly onto their bench. The issue with this design is that any restored Pokemon a player drew would be stuck in their hand. Twist Mountain's effect could let you put a restored Pokemon you drew onto your bench like any other Pokemon. While this may have given it a legitimate niche if the effect was guaranteed to work, the fact you only get to put down a restored Pokemon half the time you use Twist Mountain makes trying to build around it generally not worth it. That 50-50 chance of the effect not working or not put a nail in the coffin for decks built around restored Pokemon. Sadly, this is the only reason Twist Mountain never saw play, as there were multiple good restored Pokemon that existed while Twist Mountain wasn't standard. The previously mentioned Aerodactyl's Ancient Stream ability, adding 10 damage to your Pokemon's attacks, was strong at the time due to the lack of damage modifying items or abilities. This was especially true if you could team up multiple Aerodactyls to deal anywhere from 20 to 40 extra damage, a feat near impossible to Twist Mountain's built in chance of failing. Archaeops was an extremely powerful Pokemon Twist Mountain could have made easier to play. This Pokemon has a ludicrous Ancient Power ability that stops both players from evolving their own Pokemon. While this effect doesn't seem too oppressive on paper, as it affects both players, whoever was using Archaeops would just build their deck in a way that they never had to evolve outside of the overpowered stage 1. Having this effect on a Pokemon that only required a single evolution could have been format warping if it weren't for the fact that Archaeops evolved from Arcan, a restored Pokemon. It's pretty safe to assume the entire reason behind Twist Mountain requiring a coin flip was to make evolving to such strong cards much more difficult, as you wouldn't need to rely on the inconsistency of the false item cards. Ultimately, Twist Mountain was just too unreliable for the deck it was intended to help the boost the consistency of. And at number 3, we have the Indigo Plateau. This stadium has the simple effect of giving all Pokemon a Legend in play 30 extra hit points. For those unaware, Pokemon Legend were Pokemon worth 2 prize cards when KO'd that you could only put into play from your hand if you had both halves of their Legend card in your hand. Like many other cards on this list, Indigo Plateau is just a bit too narrow in its application to have seen widespread play. Trying to build decks around the Legend Pokemon was extremely difficult, due to needing two cards in hand to even play them, as well as their attacks generally costing a lot of energy. For example, both of Cryogre and Groudon's Legend attacks cost 4 energy, but are extremely powerful if you get to use them. Indigo Plateau was meant to be a tool for these types of decks to keep the attacker the player invested so many cards into alive for longer. While decks built around keeping a single Pokemon Legend alive never reached the top tables at large tournaments, there were many players who tried to take advantage of their strengths. One such strategy was decks built around Kyogre and Groudon Legend as well as Vileplume and Ranunculus. With the latter two Pokemon to play, your opponent couldn't play any item cards, which were called trainers at the time, and you could freely move any damage from Kyogre and Groudon Legend to another one of your Pokemon. In the meantime, you'd use Mega Tidal Wave Attack for 4 energy to put the top 5 cards your opponent's deck into the discard pile and deal 30 damage to each of their Pokemon for every energy card put into the discard. Although this attack dealt damage, it was really used to put all your cards from your opponent's deck into the discard pile, at which point they would lose due to the Pokemon TCG's game mechanics. In this deck specifically, Indigo Plateau fulfilled a solid role in the deck by making Cryogre and Groudon Legend harder to knock out while setting up both stage 2 evolutions. When this deck first became playable with the release of Black and White Base Set, there were very few viable stadium cards, which meant that one which provided defensive utility like Indigo Plateau could actually be a reliable means of boosting a Pokemon's longevity. While this deck was incredibly powerful if it could actually fully set up, it often ran to issues doing so due to Cryogre and Groudon Legend having an electric type weakness, an enormous issue in a format dominated by powerful electric attackers in Magnezone Prime and Zekrom. While there were decks that could justify using Indigo Plateau, these were just gimmick strategies that saw no competitive play so it deserves a number 3 spot on this list. And at number 2 on this list, we have Paradise Resort, a world champion promo card with the effect of reducing the retreat cost of all Psyducks in play by one colorless energy. 
as a special, extremely limited in quantity promo card, Paradise Resort is clearly never intended to be played seriously. As a stadium card, it's entirely outclassed by the incredibly popular Beach Court, as it applies the one colors retreat cost reduction to all basic Pokemon. Hilariously, Paradise Resort could have a theoretical niche over Beach Court in decks that played a lot of Psyducks, because the retreat cost reduction would only affect your Pokemon if your opponent doesn't play any Psyduck. Of course, this niche is pretty much a joke, and Paradise Resort will likely never see competitive play, due to the Pokemon Company trying their hardest to make their World Tournament promo cards bad ever since Tropical Beach accidentally became an impossible to acquire staple while it was legal in the standard format. However, just because Paradise Resort was intended to be terrible doesn't make it the worst stadium card of all time. Taking the dishonorable title as the worst stadium card of all time, we have Primordial Altar. This stadium has the effect of looking at the top card of your deck and letting you choose to put it into your discard pile. While many other cards on this list have either niche effects or effects that aren't impactful enough to see play, Primordial's Altar's effect is almost as close to useless as you can get in the Pokemon TCG. If you decide to play this card, one of two things can happen. Either you put the top card of your deck into your discard pile, or you do nothing. In the Pokemon TCG, playing a card just to put the top card of your deck in the discard pile is just not good. If you're playing a deck that wants to put cards in their own discard pile, there are much better options to play than running a stadium as bad as Primordial Altar. To really hammer home how bad this card is, let's take a look at cards like Pokestop. This stadium has the effect of discarding the top three cards of your deck and putting any item cards discarded that way into your hand. Not only does Pokestop discard three times as many cards, but you can also get more item cards into your hand while doing so. The only upside Primordial Altar has over its much superior counterpart is that it's so bad your opponent won't want to use their own stadium card to get rid of it. Doing so would generally favor whoever put down Primordial Altar since any stadium your opponent plays might be an upgrade. Alright, and that's it for the list. If you think we missed any other terrible ones, please let us know down in the comments below.